Hello everyone, we're here located with Jeremy, right? Jerry or, sorry, Bonilla. Jerry Bonilla. <laughs> Hi Jerry, how are you today? Good, I'm really happy to be in support of uh, Casita, which is where I got my first break um, four and a half years ago. That's where I first um, displayed um, in a group show uh, called uh, Loteria, which was the theme. And um, I was fortunate enough to sell my first piece there also. Wow, yeah. very cool. So what type of art do you do? Um, I would say it's representational. Um, I was uh, classically trained, so I'm really big on like proportions and um, value. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay. Do you have any artwork here displayed today? I only have um, two pieces at a casita and um, yeah, it's a rose. Um, uh, 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 um, yeah, um, 12 pieces of roses and um, a like little uh, red um, sphere which is found in like um, Chinese New Year mm -hmm. so I figured because it, the theme is red to incorporate it for the um, the red theme for the event. yeah for the event very cool so tell me a little bit about yourself and where you come from um I am Mexican American <laughs> I was born here um, in Monterey Park uh, my parents are from Mexico um, so I could really um, relate to what Casita, uh, Casita does. Um, Yolanda's awesome and uh, I think this is a really good outlet for upcoming local artists who need an outlet to you know show their their art um, and uh, yeah I try to plug as many people as I can um, just to um, share a piece of the sandbox since I think there's space for everybody to <laughs> enjoy as part of the art community that we all partake, yeah. That's great, I'm glad to see that, you know, you're doing your thing and that's yeah. a good thing, you know? Great. Is there anywhere else where your art is displayed? Um, yeah, actually I'm gonna be showing um, in Long Beach um, at um, Gallery Azul, which um, the organizer, her name is Gora Vasquez, and she's also very supportive of um, local artists and uh, at the, uh, San Gabriel Fine Arts Association. I have um, four pieces that will be um, in display uh, starting this coming week. And um, yeah, yeah, I try to get out there and just try to, yeah, stay busy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Do you have a website and or anywhere so they can um, reach you? People could just Google me and I'm found on Facebook, MySpace, and um, that's pretty much where I list like my different shows. And I have a mailing list, so if people want to find out um, the events I'm in. Um, I, I, I do a, um, a timeline of, you know, um, where, where, where I participate. I do um, chalk festivals as well. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to Pasadena's um, in June, which um, it's their 20th anniversary. Okay. And they really pamper the uh, artists there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, my, my medium of choice um, would be pastels, um, soft and hard pastels. So I'm not, um, I guess you're conventional artist who partakes in oil or acrylic or paint brushes for that matter. Yeah. Trying to do something different. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, totally. All right. Is there anything you would like to tell your fans out there? Um, thank you for the support and um, yeah, just support your local artists because um, with these difficult times, I feel that whatever support we're able to get goes um, a long ways yeah great thank you all right thank you very much it was nice meeting you it was a pleasure likewise thank you <laughs> hi olivia how are you doing today i'm fine how are you very good thank you for being here today and letting us you know get to know you a little better so tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started um well um i'm from east l.a originally and um you know i'm one of these people that i've always done artwork all my life about my you know about my life about my experiences and um you know i, I got an opportunity to go to ucla mm -hmm. i went to ucla school of art and um, i got my degree there and i've been doing art ever since and so um, i do a lot of mixed media work and um you know i am also uh, i also teach art in los angeles schools and um and so that's been that's going to be a big issue for us right now there's uh, the los angeles schools have hired a lot of artists to teach art and so uh, and uh, we've been able to sort of work with the students to do lessons and things that incorporate their lives mm -hmm. and as a working artist you know I can bring that um, that creativity process to the students and it gets really complex and fun so right now my life is is, um, is beautifully meshed because everything is about the art and creativity <laughs> yeah 
I'm glad you're doing that. So tell me a little bit about the things that you have displayed here today. Uh, well, today at Casita del Pueblo, I was really happy to be a part of it. I'm a local artist here on the east side. You know, sometimes we call Whittier Montebello Upper East Los. <laughs> so, you know, it's still my East LA grounds. And um, yeah, so today I have a papel picado piece, uh, which is a cut paper piece, uh, and it's based on Mexican movies. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, when I grew up in East LA, uh, you know, it was around the time when Galavision, you know, and the cable was starting to show all these like yeah, Cine de Oro yeah. Mexican movie stuff. And I grew up watching a lot of that stuff, and I was really fascinated with it, um, and especially because a lot of it uh, spoke to like roles of women. So you know the different roles of women, like how some women were already just fighting, you know, machismo and yeah. <laughs> trying to be independent. <laughs> Even in the 40s and 50s, there's yeah. been a lot of struggle uh, for that. And so I, I really identified with some of those characters, and I see that they, uh, you know, some of those issues are still very important to us today as women, trying to be strong, independent, to find out who we are, and find men to support that <laughs> you know and luckily in my life I, I have I have that it's been really wonderful so this piece today is called Mexican movie red or Cine de Oro Rojo uh, the theme that uh, Yolanda wanted to uh, told me about the owner of the gallery was you know what does red mean to you mm -hmm. and I thought wow you know it's like red is so much of everything and in my piece I kind of I wanted to play with the idea of red I was also a word in Spanish so la red yeah. also has to do with the internet and it yeah, has to do with the net la red and it also has to do with connections and networking and there's a movie called la red uh, which I, I think it came out um, in the 40s or 50s and it's a mystery oh. and it's about a woman who gets caught in this like mystery suspense thriller but you know of course she finds her way out of it you know okay. and so I wanted to kind of connect all these elements of red from different mm -hmm. movies so la red could be the Spanish network internet uh, or that you know that, that capture that connection but la red is also el rojo it's yeah. also the color red to us in English so it's mm -hmm. one of those translatable words that it, it depends works. So you, it, it works, works yeah it works together it's like oh that's the same one when you read it it depends what language you're reading yeah. so I wanted to take all these other elements of red from other films like the red dresses the red tacones all these aspects of femininity and strength mm -hmm. and um, and it also has like a, a part of the uh, piece has uh, one of the movies from Dolores del Rio called Bugambilia which which is, uh, which is an interesting story of what would happen if you don't marry the man your daddy picks for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, so, so it's kind of combined with that and then women who go out to pursue their dreams, so there's symbols of that too. And it's all things that were seen as red in the movie and red in the movie posters. Interesting. Yeah. That was a great idea. <laughs> it was your idea, I take it? Yes, yes it was, yes it was, yes. Yeah. This was great. all part of my uh, idea and uh, one of the paths that I'm taking about. Like I told you, it's, like, it's kind of like growing up as a Chicana, you know, we, there's a lot of things that that, um, influence us in our modern contemporary life as Americans also yeah. but then there's also that rich history that we have so uh, one of the ideas I liked about like I was telling you read was that combination of the word mm -hmm. you know that it could work in both English and Spanish yeah. yeah okay well since you're a teacher and you teach art what, what what type of things do you tell your students you know that want to start somewhere and they don't know where to start ah that's a great question thank you because that happens to adults too mm -hmm. you know the first thing I tell them is like you know don't worry about what it needs to look like. You're not here to please me or please yourselves. Just start. And so sometimes I start with a very easy process. You know, even like if they close their eyes and I say, okay, draw a line and see what happens. Okay, and then look at it. What does it look like? Turn it around. Okay, ask your friend. Trade, trade pictures. Add to it. So I try to just get them over that fear of like, it's supposed to look like this and this is what happens. Because yeah. what happens to us as artists, you know, once we start the creative process, you start something and the art takes a life of its own and you have to go with it. So yeah. you kind of have to be let go and like take that risk and go, That's well, I can't make it be that red because it doesn't want to be. It wants <laughs> to be this other red, you know, and you start seeing those subtleties. So I really try to tell my students to like, be free, let go, and it'll come to you. And, um, and you know, that's been really, that's been working really well, I think, with my students. They really respond to it. That's great. That's great advice. Thank you very much. Well, is there anywhere we can go on, like, on the website and find you, or what type of schools do you teach at? Uh, well, right now I'm with the uh, arts education branch for LA Unified, and uh, I'm on the, one of the east and south, south side schools of LA. Uh, so, um, and, you know, I am actually on the web. I was one of the uh, model teachers for the LA County um, uh it's the LA County Office of Education, uh, the superintendent, the state superintendent had an arts initiative. And so if you Google me online, <laughs> you know, you can find my lesson on there. And, um, you know, I do want to get a website going. I need to get a website going. But you can find me on Facebook. Right okay. now on Facebook, that's where I have a lot of my stuff that's going on. So it would be great to hear from people and get in touch. Yeah. Okay. Well, give us your website. Your Facebook. 
Uh, well, I believe that I'm the only Olivia Y. Armas on Facebook. <laughs> so if you put the Y, the Y is for Yanez. That's my mother's name. Oh. And Armas is my, uh, my, I guess, my father's name. And, you know, I, I, when I got married, I never changed my name because, I, you know, it wasn't an issue for me. <laughs> you know, okay. I, would, I felt like I needed <laughs> to. Nice. I just, I started off as Olivia Y. Armas, and that's what I've been. So that's why if you find me, I'm kind of the only one I think I'm there. So, yeah, so it's Olivia Y. Armas. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Olivia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's great to talk to you. Hi Mario, how are you today? Good, good, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. So I see that you're here at the Casita del Pueblo. Tell us a little bit about how you got started. Uh, paintings, I do oil paintings. Uh, oil paintings, I just picked it up maybe about two years ago. But I've been drawing and actually I'm a tattoo artist as well. So I've been tattooing for like 15 years. Oh, wow. So I kind of, my that's my new venture I guess, oil paintings. So how did you get started out. with that? I mean just you just uh, I've been drawing since I was a kid and you know when I was growing up I grew up in East LA you know we were into like the graffiti crews and, and then from there you pick up like other techniques and yeah. you know I just kind of picked it up from there so but now it's like I, I'm really pushing my my paintings though that's that's kind of like my passion right now so what inspired you to start doing your art um, actually the roots uh, the art that I, that I have in there, it's mostly iconic uh, Mexican cinema, like the actors from the 40s and 50s, you know, Pedro Infante, Jorge Negrete, like those stars, you know, those are the ones that I, I'm kind of, kind of like a, a tribute to them, because that's what I grew up watching with, you know, with my grandma, and, and it's just funny the way when you're growing up, you don't, that's the last thing in your mind, and when you grow up, you kind of appreciate where you came from, and what you've seen and it's, that's that's my tribute towards, towards that. What type of art do you have displayed today? Uh, it's basically that. It's 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 uh, I have a piporro. Uh, what does that mean? Piporro is actually a comedian from the 40s. Okay. And he's actually it's it's a big painting. That's the only original one that I have in here, and all the other and the other two are prints. Okay. Uh, it's same thing. Iconic stars from the 40s from the Mexican cinema. Are you displaying anywhere else? Like, I mean, in any time um, Actually, I just finished doing uh, my first solo show at East I Love. Uh, and hopefully in June, I'll do another show here at Casita. And just art festivals that are coming up, like art walks. Not Very cool. Okay. Can you send a message out to the young artists that are starting? Don't go out. Just draw. You'll do good. All right, thank you. <laughs> Mario Lopez. <laughs> Not that one, the original one. <laughs> Hi, Raul. How are you doing today? I'm good. Yourself? Very good. You enjoying yourself? Having a good time. Having a good time. Well, whether, when there's art involved, it's always a good time. That's great. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Well, um, I've been an artist since I was a little kid. I've always loved to draw and paint, create stories, characters. And I've been a professional animator for about 17 years now. Um, I did like 10 years at Walt Disney Feature Animation. Um, yeah, and all the hand-drawn productions, you know, from like Pocahontas all the way to Treasure Planet. Um, I got to work with, yeah, I got to work with Glenn Keane, which was really cool. He was my mentor there. And um, after that, I went and did my own short at Nickelodeon, a little cartoon I made that they financed. And I got to direct and produce called Hero Heights. And I, I did a season or two on Family Guy as a story artist. What was Hero Heights about? Uh, Hero Heights is a story, it's really cool. It's, imagine a little town, a little suburban town where everyone has superpowers. Everyone, the kids, the teachers, everybody. So, and they, but they all have to get along, even though everybody's different and has different abilities. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a statement about us being different and everybody being special, but we still gotta get along and deal with each other's crap, you know? It was really cute. And it was about two little boys that were always picking on the little girls in the neighborhood. Because they didn't know, you know, they'd just tease them and pull their little pigtails and shoot lightning bolts at them and stuff. But then this beautiful princess girl, like a little Wonder Woman girl moves in, and they've never seen a girl like that. Now it's like, whoa! And they both fall in love with her. But that little girl, she teams up with the other two little girls now, and she becomes the leader. And now, those little boys, they can't pick on her anymore, on the kids' girls anymore. So they kind of form like a group, all five of them. It's really cute. Um, it's about kids getting along. And, wow, that's uh, great. I can actually picture it as you say it. <laughs> Hero Heights, you can find it online on my YouTube channel, uh, Chunti Chuntaro. Yeah. Okay, you were saying you were also on Family Guy? Yeah, I did a season on Family Guy doing storyboards for them, which was really cool. And uh, 
Uh, I've done a lot of freelance projects. I, I recently did the uh, the pilot episode for the uh, uh, David Alvarez, the creator of uh, the Homies. You know the Homies, the little yes. little figurines. Okay, yeah. The guy approached me to do the uh, animated pilot for uh, a, a, a series proposal that I just wrapped for him. I did it all by myself in my home studio. Came out badass. <laughs> Neta. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Do you have anything displayed here today? Yeah, I've got two pieces in there. Uh, La Diabla, which is a devil lady, you know, kind of like superhero lady. And then uh, a portrait I did of Danny Trejo, Machete. Wow. Yeah, watercolor I did, yeah. And um, also, I just want to mention this. I, I host my own podcast uh, on the web called Man vs. Art. It's uh, art, animation, and comic shenanigans. It's, it's uh, inspiration, uh, stories, and uh, advice for artists of all kinds. I, I bring in colleagues of mine, friends of mine, professionals from all over the industry. I've had Don Bluth, uh, the guy that uh, created The American Tale and, and the, the Land Before Time. I had him in there, yeah. I had Bill Plimpton in there. And uh, I just scheduled a, an interview with one of the co-creators of Robot Chicken. Uh, you guys are familiar with that? Yeah, I'm gonna be interviewing him. So I make my own cartoons, I draw, I paint, I teach animation at the Nomon School of, uh, of Visual Effects in Hollywood. I teach them traditional principles. These are all the computer geeks, but I'm teaching them the way we did it in the old school so they can retain that charm and beauty of the, the old way of doing things and inject it with the new technology, man. So cartoons can still kick ass. I'm all about that. And uh, I just, I love it, man. You know, I, That's I don't great. do it, I talk about it. Do you have any new projects coming up? Um, right now I'm beginning uh, this idea I have for a, a film noir kind of uh, graphic novel uh, based on the, uh, uh, based on the story that happened in Mexico with these narco idiots that are killing everybody. And it's just based on the story of this, this little old man who said no mas. And, uh, well, it, he, he got into a shootout with them and, and killed like four of those dudes. Little old man. Yeah. It's just a great story, true story. But um, I, I want to kind of serialize that into a graphic novel as a serious kind of a story. And uh, then from there, develop that into an animated short. Uh, Very I'm cool. The ideas and the stories and the characters. Okay, since you're also a teacher, what would you like to give, you know, what type of message do you give to your, your student? Best advice I can give you, you guys out there, you want to be an artist? You get out of it what you put into it. It's not easy. You got to work at it. But, but the rewards, the satisfaction you get when you look at that piece, when you're done with it, nothing compares. Nothing compares. Just don't give up. All right, thank you, Raul. <laughs> Pleasure. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, Elena, how are you? I'm well, I'm well, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. So tell me, how are you doing here today? Do you have any um, displays of art today? I do have some work today, and um, base, I, I've, I've shown here before, I had my very first solo show here at Casita del Pueblo, and um, Yoli is like made me so much part of her family here at the shop and she asked me a few months ago oh will you be a part of the red show and I said sure I'll try to I'm really busy but I would love to help you and and you've helped me of course I want to help you and then I forgot about it and I came in yesterday and she said are you going to bring some work and I said Yes. I said, oh, I said, oh my gosh, I have to. I have to bring something because she's been such a big support yeah. of all my art. I, ha I have to support her, her as well. So this morning, I, I've just been like, okay, I have 12 hours since she told me last night. And so I did it last this morning. I woke up, I had a great idea, and I had some stuff, and I just painted on top of some of my old sketches, rode my bike down to the, to the store, got some frames, put them in my backpack, came here, framed it all up, hung it on the wall, had some extra time to help her. <laughs> That's how art is, huh? just out of nowhere. It has to be, and sometimes the best work comes that way. And it's it's amazing what you could do in little time. And I was I felt I felt really good about that. I felt really good that I had something to give, something to contribute, and be a part of today. What type of art do you do? I paint a lot of girls acrylic on wood. I do um, not always wood, but I've been doing a lot of that lately. And uh, it's, it's a lot, people have asked me if my art is digital online. And that kind of makes me feel good because I'm like, oh no, it's it's not digital. I, I that's just my me and my. That's face. how good it looks, right? <laughs> I think so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. But um, yeah, that makes me feel really good. And I do a lot of just man, a lot of feminine stuff. A lot of my girls have like these crazy lashes and colorful hair. You know, 
kind of like a little bit of color in the hair. Yeah, I like you. <laughs> I love her hair. Thank you. Thank you very much. How did you get started? Where did your inspiration come from? Um, I've always drawn girls since I was a, I was a little girl. When I was a little girl, I would, um, I would draw. I had my Barbies. You know, I had my other stuff. I had my Play-Doh and my Legos, things I could create with. But then sometimes I would have my sketch pad and I would draw my characters. I draw these squares and I draw different girls in each little box. And in those boxes, underneath those boxes, I'd put their names. Oh, you know, Sarah, Lisa, all these little girls. And then in my mind, they would play. It's like playing house, but without the dolls. But and then like I, I turn to the next page and I draw them like five years later. Oh, and they're in school and they're in high school now, and they have a boyfriend. And the boyfriends always look really feminine because I'm not good at drawing guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like kind of my way that I would play. And I have my aunts have stacks of like my little drawings from when I was a little girl, and I've always drawn girls. I just always have. It's just been easier for me. So I'm more comfortable with it, and I like it, and I like lashes. So. <laughs> That's what I do. Okay, give us your information where we can contact you. Uh, you can contact me. My website is www.itsjuste.com. And you could also find me on Facebook, Facebook forward slash I am Elena Soto, E L A I N A S O T O. It's You could find it on my website too. But yeah, you could find me there. Or if you, you just contact the shop and they can tell you how to get a hold of me. That's easy. Is there anything you would like to tell the aspiring artist? It doesn't matter what, what, you, what anyone thinks is right or wrong. It's whatever feels right to you. And who cares what anyone says about your artwork? It's yours. And as long as it's, it makes you feel good, then just do it. Who cares? I've had a lot of people give me criti criticism about my art, and I just said, well, it's mine, and it, yeah, that's your opinion, and it's okay. Because it, everybody has an opinion about art. And I don't, it can't always be right or wrong, but it, it, it's whatever you make it. All right, Elena, thank you very much for your time. Thank it was you. a pleasure. It was wonderful, wonderful <laughs> meeting with you. Thank you. Hi, Nicole, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Very good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Nicole aguilar Kopp, and I'm an artist, and I also am a small business owner. Um, I own a company called Love Nicole Stitchery where it's all pretty much like hand-sewn, hand-stitched uh, accessories, like my hair accessory, uh, purses, scarves, and um, I also sell my artwork. And I'm starting to incorporate sewing and art and, and painting together. Okay. Where do you come from? Uh, Whittier, California. <laughs> That's cool. So how did you start, you know, with this inspiration to do these different, you know, I see your little necklace there oh, yeah. and your bow. Uh, well, actually, um, it kind of all started with my grandmother. My grandmother used to uh, sew and then my mom sewed. So growing up, I had a background in um, everybody sewing, making dolls, giving them as gifts. And so actually the reason how I started was because I got laid off when, you know, everything changed and business got hard. Um, and I, I finally took it as a sign to, to do what I've always wanted to do and take a chance mm -hmm. and start my own business. So it was a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice from my husband. And um, I just started following what I wanted to do and started designing and drawing things and hit or miss. And then I started giving them as gifts. And then people would react to my friends wearing the stuff. And it was kind of like, oh, I'd, I'd want something like that. Or, oh, where did you get that? So it was kind of like hearing feedback that people actually liked my stuff was just kind of like gave me the confidence to keep going. And so now it's just, every day is just step by step, just trying to be successful in what I wanted to do. That's great. Okay, so what else do you do? Do you do any painting also? Yeah, I, uh, I paint in acrylic um, and uh, oil, but I tend, I like acrylic best, so. How does that work? Tell us a little bit about how that works. Um, acrylic is actually a tougher medium to use, in my opinion, because uh, it dries very fast. So as opposed to oil, oil you can continuously mix and then come back an hour later and start mixing again on your on your canvas. Uh, with acrylic, you mix it. You have to keep your oil, your um, paint wet while you're using like the process of doing it. You have to keep it wet, and then you uh, kind of more like layer when you when you paint. So it's like you layer, you come back again, add more color, come back again, and add shadow tone, things like that. How exciting. So what type of pieces do you have displayed today? Uh, today I actually have a matching set. It's a, a boy and a girl and it's again multimedia, it, a medium. It's um, 
the painting is like their head, their faces, all their skin, and the background is painted with acrylic. And then the clothing is all hand stitched. So I created, they're both wearing little hats with little, everything that I do is very girly and sweet. So they have little hearts all over their clothes. And um, she has a little dress with a bunch of heart detailing. And I'm really big on my stitching um, being very, very detailed. Um, you know, just kind of, I like to kind of push my sewing as well because you know all, stitching is not really that hard of a medium mm -hmm. but um, I try to incorporate it almost like painting with a needle and thread and uh, so I'm trying to do wow. stuff where I incorporate painting so I keep challenging myself with my painting but then also with my sewing. Okay, that's great. Well tell us where we can contact you. Um, I actually have a Facebook fan page if you look uh, look up Love Nicole Stitchery. Um, my, my website is currently being um, developed right now because I'm gonna go live with a shopping cart and all that whole stuff oh, which is very wow. exciting yes. yeah and uh, right now I am now happy to say that um, I'm store based at Casita del Pueblo in Whittier and then I also um, am store based in Fullerton at a shop called No Coast Studio and that's also where I work and it's a gallery same thing like I'm doing the same thing where somebody giving me a chance to be in their art shows I'm doing the same thing at a gallery in Fullerton and, and going around and you know even tonight I was like hey you're an artist would you like to do a group show next week or you know next month and uh, so I'm really trying to like try to increase the um, art scene here in Whittier um, by trying to get my stuff out in Whittier, but then also supporting other people in different cities like Fullerton and Pasadena and all that stuff. So, sure, that's amazing. Well, tell our upcoming artists something that inspired you to start. Um, actually, I would say my mom. My mom inspired me the most because even though she's always been scared of me doing art, um, she always told me that the one thing she liked about me is that I never give up. And so, no matter how hard it is I just want people to know like no, when I meet kids or anything they say oh I like to art I like to draw I tell them do, do what you love then then follow it work hard draw every day paint every day do what you like and don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't be successful being an artist or being creative or sewing or dancing or acting like if you really care about it then just do it and and you can make it you just have to work really hard Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a great. <laughs> Hi, Alanda. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I'm very blessed. I have a strong support of Whittier here and artists and family. So I'm really, really happy to be here and to be able to stay and expand in Whittier. So we're having fun at our re-grand opening. That's great. I'm glad that you're doing this today. Thank so you. tell us a little bit about how you got started. Well, I was teaching. I came back. I grew up in Whittier and I decided that I wanted to come back to my community and teach. After teaching for a few years with my students here in the Uptown Whittier District, I decided that I found there were a lot of disparities. They weren't connected to culture too much. Um, that was during the time at the beginning when school funds were being cut. We couldn't go on field trips. Art wasn't being accessible anymore in the classroom. So we had to be very creative. So I thought that I would, you know, open something up, change professions and create a community space that uh, brought artists and brought the community and created a, a community of artists and an appreciation for the arts in Uptown Whittier. Okay. What made you move your store from across the street to, to this one now? Well we were actually around the corner. We were on the main drag on Greenleaf and um, for us we just wanted to expand. We wanted to come on a corner location. We wanted to be visible. We wanted to be attractive to the dining experience as well too. Um, on Greenleaf it was a little bit challenging to have you know, our customers come in with parking. Um, the dynamics are changing a lot, so we wanted to grow and expand and not have to leave Whittier entirely, but to just adjust. And I think in, during these times in business, you have to adjust. So we're very fortunate that we have a strong support of artists and we have a strong community in Whittier. Great. So are you an artist yourself? No, I wish I was. I have, <laughs> I have, I'm too busy. <laughs> I, I am not an artist. I support art. I enjoy it. I can appreciate it. And I love to support it and, and promote it. So that's what I do. And um, I have a lot of friends that have art and a lot of friends that actually have left maybe teaching or other professions or unfortunately been laid off. And now they've been able to tap into their craft and be able to have a space to sell their work. So now we're creating entrepreneurship for not only women, because we do have a lot of women designers and artists, but also men as well and youth as well. We have a lot of young new artists here at Casita, so we're really excited and proud to be able to do that. What was the moment that told you, let's open the store, let's do this? When was that? I think, you know, when I was in my classroom and I had my students 
drawing better than I was. <laughs> so <laughs> letting me know, Miss Garcia, we can do it. <laughs> and I thought, wow, there's such talent here, but they really didn't have the access to, you know, be able to promote their art be able to feel that they were an artist. Um, sometimes we get so caught up in the academic element of education and the test driven, you know, mentality that we forget that there's so many creative outlets for youth out there. And I am just very proud that we have a community space where parents and families can come and expose their children to art. And we have events like this where a child can meet an artist and feel proud about that and say, well, my artist, that artist that I met lives in Whittier in my town. So. I'm very proud of that. Great. Is there other stores that you have around here? Not yet, but we are expanding into Los Angeles and we'll have our second store coming this spring. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Yes. And I know you're a mother too. Yeah. So how do you do it? How do you run the store and your little kids and everything? I have a very strong partner. He is wonderful. He supports me 150%. Um, we don't have to worry about anything in competition or roles reversed. I mean, we're very open to it. We're both parents, we're active parents, and our children are very involved in the business as well too. They understand um, that it's a lot of hard work and sacrifice to own your own business, especially during these times. And uh, we push for education, it's very important. They're exposed to wonderful artists that have become part of our family now, and we're really happy that they're able to have that experience. So they're really blessed as well. Okay, can you give our young artists um, a word of inspiration for them? Keep art alive. You know, you can. You don't have to do art illegally. There are venues that support you, and you are definitely always welcomed here at Casita del Pueblo. There are other venues here in Uptown Whittier too, and in surrounding cities that do support artists as well. And youth programs are available through facilities like mine. Um, we're definitely open to working with schools. We understand that school programs are cut, and we love working in partnerships. And we hope that we can continue to foster awareness in the arts. Give us your website and the information. Well, it's www.casitadelpueblo.com and um, we're renovating our website right now as we're expanding. Um, but you're more than welcome to come and visit our home base here in Uptown Whittier. It's a great place for dining and it's a great place to enjoy a family experience here in Uptown Whittier and also for the adults. There's a nightlife here that, you know, is being cultivated. So we together can work to enhance our ec economy here in Whittier, but also our community in the arts. So I hope you come and visit us in Uptown Whittier. Okay, Yolanda, thank you very much for your time. Thank it was a pleasure. You. It was wonderful <laughs> to meet you. Thank you.